Okay, Griffith works out example 5 2 the general solution to the motion of a particle and cross E and B fields. Yeah, that's kind of the example we were looking at last time. Uh, e in the Z direction, B in the X, the particle starts at the origin right, with a given velocity V0 Y hmm? uh, using Griffith's formal results equations 5 6 to find the special speed v0 whose subsequent motion is simple straight line uh, constant speed motion right that's uh, so equation 5 6 is uh, uh, the one dealing with the general solution basically to the differential equation yeah? or is it different in the old edition um, let me see if it's different in the old edition uh, I have the book here uh, five six oh yeah no it's the same it's the uh, these are the solutions yeah to the differential equation which we did last time which we did last time uh, whose subsequent motion is simple to verify that this answer makes sense by using elementary physics 133 style right hand rule arguments and the Lorentz force law hmm? yeah he wants look he says the initial speed v0 whose subsequent motion is a simple straight line constant speed right and using equations 5 6 these are equations 5 6 here okay oh okay all right i see that all right I now first of all it's an initial speed so that means t equals zero right so you can immediately find what y zero is C1 plus C3 hmm? or, or actually uh, let's keep that uh, uh, let's keep that after we find the derivative so we can first figure out what y dot is because what's the speed there's no motion in the x so the speed will be y dot squared plus z dot squared square root okay y dot being the part the derivative of y with respect to time okay rate of change of y and with this we can find what y dot is so this is part a y dot is minus omega one just differentiate y1 y of t yeah so this is y dot of t sine derivative of cosine minus sine derivative of sine is cosine Right? and this is e over b and then z dot you differentiate z of t so you get minus c2 minus w c2 there's no w1 it's just w and sine is cosine so minus w C1 cosine omega t. The constants have zero derivatives, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now you could find what y dot zero is because this is initial speed at zero, yeah? And so uh, 
the sine term goes away and you just have the cosine term and z dot at zero Okay, now uh, think about it. You want this to be independent of the period. So if that's the case, yeah, yeah. C1 has to equal C2 or they have to go away. So C1 has to equal C2 has to equal 0. And when that happens, you're just left with y dot zero equal e over b, and z dot zero equal zero. And now, when you find the speed, you get e over b, which is constant. So this is the special initial speed and notice that this came from the from the y dot from dy over dt which means you would have you would have to have the initial velocity equal e over b in the y direction for this to happen so that you can get an initial speed so you can get uh, a speed of e over b upon which the sinusoidal terms in time go away okay. All right, so. and you get a straight line motion Now, there's another way. He says, moving on, verify that. There's another way we could have actually found that out, which is actually neat, which uh, relies on the right-hand rule. Right? Well, look, uh, we know uh, that the electric force has to equal QE. Right? And E, according to that example, According to figure 7 in your book, E is in the Z direction. So this is Q magnitude of E in the Z direction. Right? And the magnetic force is Q V cross B. Okay? Now we know that we know what B is, we just don't know what V is. Hmm? B is in the uh, x direction so this is magnitude of b in the x okay now when according to newton's second law sum of forces has to equal ma right well if you have a simple straight line constant speed motion constant speed motion that immediately eliminates the acceleration to zero now constant speed motion that means if the particle is under the effect of zero for net force it will continue to move in that initial velocity well when would that happen when these two forces add up to zero so when so that means they have to balance each other out, right? So one has to be negative the other. In other words, Q, E in the Z 
has to equal minus q v cross b in the x. Okay, well, think about it. That means v cross b has to be in the z, in the minus z. We know x, y, z. Okay. Uh, we know that b is in the x. Okay. Well, use the right hand rule. If B is in the X, in which direction should V be so that you get a net answer in the minus Z? Well, use the right hand rule. V Uh, B in the X so that clearly tells you that V has to be in the Y direction right because look if if V is in this way What's V cross B? Well, do the, do the right hand rule. V cross B This would put their cross product in the negative Z. This would be their cross product. This would be V cross B. So this would be in the minus Z and you have a minus here which would make the final result Q right and then the speed times B and the Z and this has to equal Q E well Q cancels Q and this is also in the Z so the components of the Z has to be the same this has to equal this which makes V equals E over B the speed equals E over B and it's in the positive Y direction so you didn't even need to solve the differential equations you could have just based that on the cross product rules right and the knowledge of Newton's second law to find out quickly that a V has to be in the positive y direction for the cross product to work out such that the forces would cancel each other out they would be equal opposite you know opposite in direction equal in magnitude and you would be able to figure out that the magnitude of the velocity by equating the components turns out to be E over B which is the same thing you get from Newton's uh, from uh, solving the differential equations according to equation 6 up here makes sense because once the uh, magnetic force electric force being in the positive that magnetic force has the same magnitude in the negative is that those two forces cancel each other out there is no net force on the particle and therefore if it starts with it with an initial velocity in the y direction it will continue to move according to Newton's second law and with a constant speed in a straight line in the y direction Okay, this concludes part A of this question, which is similar, by the way, uh, to problem number two in chapter five in Griffith, except it's asked a little bit differently. Uh, there you just have V0 uh, with, its, with the speed. Here we are asked to find the speed.
I'll do B since B refers to uh, problem 3. I'll do it in a separate recording. And then C would just be uh, similar to part B and number 2. I'll go, So I'll do each one of these in a separate recording. So this will just be uh, uh, number 2A asked from a different person. That does it.